Employers of Reddit, what is the weirdest excuse an employee gave you for not showing up to work? That turned out to be true. Hey I can't come to work today. My fish is giving birth. Turns out that fish is extinct in the wild so they're worth quite a bit of money. And they eat their babies if they left in the tank with them. No wonder they're extinct in the wild. Friend slash ex coworker at a restaurant got shot in his own backyard. It was a case of mistaken identity. He had bought a condemned house and remodeled it in Portland, or someone who knew the crackheads that lived there before thought he was the guy that fricked him over. So my buddy calls himself an ambulance and then calls into work letting us know what happened. This is before the ambulance arrived. Our boss was flabbergasted and thought he was bullshooting at first but he is the most honest person you will find, but then realized he was telling the truth when his room had called in for him thinking he could not call in himself. The boss gave him paid time off and set up a fundraiser to pay for hospital costs. We were very popular local hangout and it only took two weeks to get all the money he needed. He even got out of it with a little extra cash. All is well that ends well. I guess. Woman called in to say she won't be able to work that week. She said the police had found her sister's head. She had to go identify it. Her sister had gone missing months prior. I don't question employees much anymore after that turned out to be true. Her family had been kidnapped and held for ransom. That being in Nigeria made it a possibility and was later confirmed by police statements. Guy used the excuse that his grandmother died. It was the third time in six months that he used the excuse. When we were getting ready to let him go another manager brought up the fact that he had met all three grandmothers, two were lesbians, earlier in the year. I had to explain this one, when I was in school, bloody teacher was arguing with me about how many grandmas you can have. My family likes getting married, it's a hobby. So I had my original grandmas, my original grandad's new wife other grandad was dead, plus my stepfather's mother, four legit grandmas. I actually gave the excuse. Guy was shot next door. He then drove his car past my house and crashed into my other neighbor's tree and then he died from the gunshot wound. The whole street was blocked off because it was a crime scene. My car was right in the middle of it. One of my co-workers once tried to call off the day after a major public holiday. Basically, a big no-no, unless you had a damn good reason. Her excuse, she walked out the door as her car was being shot up. The supervisor naturally didn't believe her until someone hinted that he might want to find a television to look at the news. A co-worker of mine at a large software company in a very normal white collar job systems engineer didn't show up to work for a week and didn't respond to emails or phone calls. He finally called in and immediately confessed to our manager that he had tried heroin for the first time and spent the entire week on a freaking heroin bender. Then he asked if he could still have his job and who he should call INHRTO talk to about finding help getting off the heroin. All of this was done completely casually and honestly. He ended up coming back to work and being fine for a couple months before disappearing again for a couple weeks and later calling in to say we should fire him because he was back on heroin and didn't feel like working anymore. Really weird situation. I'm a former manager. Had a guy not show up for work and on the second day when nobody had heard from him, I tried to reach his wife to find out if everything was okay. She said he was in the hospital and would be there for a few more days. When he came back to work he told the long story of how he was held for mental observation after a trip to the ER. He was up late playing WoW when he stood up and hit his head on a shelf over his desk. The cut was bad enough to need stitches, so he drove himself to the ER since everyone else was asleep. During the process of getting patched up they asked if he had been drinking and he told them yes, so they won't let him drive himself home. He was annoyed and said something along the lines of I'm not going to kill myself driving back home which was either taken the wrong way or misunderstood because he was now on suicide watch. He didn't play nice with the psych consult, so they admitted him for observation basically against his will. His phone and personal items were taken, so he called and called in. After a few days he decided to answer the questions the right way and his wife was eventually able to take him home.
Honestly, I didn't bother to independently verify any of this. After hearing the story, and knowing the guy's personality, it was completely believable. My husband had to call in, because one of our goats was in labor, the baby was in the wrong position, and I needed him to hold the goat, while I repositioned the kid. Boss didn't believe it or didn't care, it could have really gone either way with him. So my husband snapped a picture of my arm in the southern end of a northern bound goat, and sent it to him. I was a substitute English teacher for a kindergarten class in China. One day on my way to work, I had a massive surprise nosebleed turns out I had a blood vessel too close to the surface of my skin. I didn't have any tissues or anything with me to stop the flow, and it ended up all over my dress and arms. I called in, and told them I wouldn't be able to make it in the class, was only an hour long, unless they wanted me to show up, and scare the little kids, by having clothes covered in blood. They told me, if I didn't send them a pic of my blood stained clothes and a bloody face selfie to prove it was really my blood, they'd take away my salary from the classes it already taught. I obliged, but quit the second that month's check landed in my account. I had to call in once, because my mom had picked something that she thought was spinach out of the garden. It looked like spinach. I eat it. It is not spinach, it was some kind of weed that made me puke and gave me diarrhea so bad I wished I was dead. I had to call into work because my cat was trapped inside my desk. My supervisor could hear him yowling as I called in. He tried so hard not to laugh at my predicament. My dog disappeared from my yard about 10 minutes before I had to leave, running up and down the block, the alley, checking neighbors yards. I call into work sobbing and freaking out, thinking has roadkill. I recruit my roommate and a neighbor to try and find him. Probably an hour in total of searching. Mathurfrika was in the hedge along the side of the house. Eventually sauntered back into the yard like nothing happened. College student in my class told me she missed the quiz because she had a severe nut allergy and her boyfriend kissed her after eating a PBJ, so she had to go to the ER. Same semester another chick in my class wanted to know if she could take the test late because she was the social director for her sorority and she needed to be at the sorority house to sign for the send delivery for a beach themed mixer. Yeah, no. I had a Mormon co-worker. Family and church values were very important to him. Church every Sunday, and he had 8 wonderful children very friendly and all around a nice guy. My boss called me and asked if I can fill in as a substitute for his 4th period class because he got busted for meth and running a meth lab. Guy calls and tells that he can't come back from his first delivery, run Red Cross meals on wheels and that all the other meals in the car would be cold because his car was blocked in by an ambulance. The guy had driven to the old lady to deliver her lunch, and heard her moaning, and through the kitchen window, saw her lying on the floor. He called an ambulance, they arrived but couldn't get in due to bars in front of the window and heavily reinforced doors. So the firefighters were called, and they blocked everything even further. Then the cops showed up to control traffic. He was at the end of the old lady's driveway, so he was only able to leave, after everyone else had left 3 hours later. My tiny skinny co-worker I can't come in today, a group of guys tried to assault me, and I sent two of them to the hospital. I have to file a police report. I didn't believed, until she actually got sued for excessive use of force. Apparently she was black belt in a couple martial arts. US Navy one of my underlings went on leave, and was gone for two weeks, and on the day he was supposed to come back, he called me, and asked if he could come in the next day. He starts off with, promise you won't laugh, ensuring I will laugh. His excuse was, that had gained too much weight and cold and fit into his uniform. Not the tight as dungarees from the 90s, but the roomy camouflage the CBs wear. He was a big beefy dude, so when he went to the uniform store, they didn't have anything in his size. He ended up meeting an old salty CB at the next navy exchange, while he was searching for the bigger pants who took him home with him to give him his huge pants. Once he got the name tag sewn on them he'd be in the next day weirdest excuse ever, and I couldn't stop laughing. With him. Yeah. Not at him. I was the employee, just a couple weeks into a new job, and one evening the police served an no-knock warrant on my house. Mine was the wrong house, they wanted one a couple doors down. 
In doing so, they smashed in the door and I wasn't able to replace it that night. I know my boss didn't believe me, but later I was able to provide proof. I had a guy call in high on crack once. He was a good worker, but a little slow, so I called his parents. Mind you he was a grown man, early slash mid 20s, but he lived with his parents. His mother had told me up front he had some troubles in the past, and was getting back on track. His mother answered, I asked if my employee was around. She said he wasn't, and asked what was wrong. I said, well, he called and have the dumbest excuse, he said he was high on crack. Mom just said, god damn it, honey has smoking crack again, and hung up. I felt pretty bad for those parents. I had boss who kept a list of weird reasons people called off work. These are a few that occurred, while I was still working there one. I got bit in the face by an alligator too. My one son stabbed my other son with a fork 3. I can't get out of my driveway, because the crime scene truck is parked there fun stuff and all true. Not an employer, but a co-worker. A guy came in late and his excuse was, I pulled off the door handle and cold and opened the door to leave. And sure enough he brought the broken door handle with him to work and took pictures of it. I once called in, because I had a bird stuck in my fireplace. Boss made me send pictures. I did. He still didn't believe me. I didn't much like that boss. Years back, I worked for a place that required a doctor's note if you called out of work sick for more than 4 days in a row. Well, I once got sick and was out for a week. I definitely went to the doctor to get checked and had them write up a note for me to turn in. My then boss dismissed it, wrote me up anyway, because anybody can get a doctor's note for anything. It doesn't mean much. Ed. The things you share with people you will never meet. Okay, grandfather passed away, and I moved into his house, 1800 miles away, to keep it secure, until we were able to contend with the contents and find a buyer. He had this 120 years old house with what can only be described as a bathroom the size of an RV bathroom. For some reason the toilet was offset by foot plus so was parallel to the middle of the shower. So, I decided to grab some work, since I'm going to be there for a few months. One month into the job I'm getting ready for work. I'm getting out of the shower, notice I had gotten a large puddle of water on the floor, decide to step over the toilet, sidestepping, with my right leg. Well, my heel hit the seat, slid out like I hit a patch of ice. Reflect kicked in, and I pushed off, towards the toilet, about to come down on the seat. Seems I timed my recovery wrong. I elbowed the toilet seat cover, trying to grab the tank. Drove it down, under my elbows, as my chin slams into the tank, I process to smash my testicles and penis, between the toilet seat and toilet lid, and fell to the floor. Called into work, boss was silent. He said well, okay, take care. Two hours later a knock at my door. I'm walking around the house, like I have saddle sores, wrapped only in a blanket. One of my bosses is standing there, smirking and goes I gotta see this shoot. The look on his face, made me feel matters were much worse than I thought they were. I was told to take as much time as I needed to recover. She had been vigorously washing her face when her pinky finger inadvertently inserted into her nostril and her pointy long fingernail punctured her sinus. Since she was in the shower it just rolled clot, and she had to go to the ur. In other words, she was mining for nuggets, when she went too deep. I know, I've been there before. The shower provides a convenient combination of disposal and cleaning afterwards, and some bits just can't be touched by blowing your nose, washing her face my ass. I wasn't the employer, but I was giving out training at a call center, so for all my trainees I was a teacher, bowers, their supervisor, their point of contact and their dad, so this one guy called in, because he was right outside the office, but he fell down an open manhole cover there had been a flood late the night before, and there was not only soaked, but smelled like a possum playing possum. He was so flustered he was crying, and it was about 20 minutes before the shift started. Lucky for him, I was friends with the clerks at the gas station across the street, and was a hardcore party animal, so I always had a spare change of clothes in my desk, went with him to the gas station, and asked for the bathroom key he didn't want anyone in the office to see him like this, otherwise I would have taken him to my office or 
to the facilities restrooms I'm not that heartless. Told him to get in, get undressed and take a hooker shower and I would be back in 10 minutes with fresh clothes, and that he could have the day off, and I would be emailing him all the info we covered in training that day, and to keep his cell phone at hand, because I was going to call him, when I was out with the clothes for him. I called, gave him my emergency clothes and a bag for his damp ones, and sent him on his way home. I didn't even report at his absence, since he was online the whole day, as soon as he got home, and I just called him, so he could listen in on the presentation, and follow the slides on his computer, and text me any questions. I settled a lot, and no longer party like a beast, yet, I still keep a travel bag with a full set of clothes, deodorant, cologne and a towel just in case someone else who is also around my size needs a hero. Had a dude call 4 hours into the shift he missed. He fell asleep on the bus, and ended up on the other side of town. The bus schedule in that area, is slower than the rest of the system, so he had to wait to take the bus back. By that time ITD be 2 hours left, so he just called him for the day. This kinda happened to me, except I didn't fall asleep. At uni the bus system was bus 1 went a route and bus 1A did the same route, but the opposite way. This was the case for all the buses in the area, except the one I needed. Bus 18 got me to work, bus 18A which I jumped on when running late took me to the university in the next town over going nowhere near my work. I had a promising new recruit that came from overseas this was a job in Australia. He showed up for one shift, but missed his next shift causing me to pull a double to cover for him. I tried calling a number of times, but didn't get through. There was no response for a couple of days, so I figured the guy just flaked on us, and didn't want to talk to me. On the third day, he calls me, the crud, sorry, I understand if you're pissed with me, and if I've lost the job. I was in hospital and cold and charged my phone, so I didn't know how to get in touch. It was 10 years ago so it wasn't like everyone used the same charger. I'm generally too generous, so I gave the guy a second chance. I worked in showbiz and occasionally good people go on benders that last a little too long. Anyway, he shows up for the next shift with one hand bandaged to the elbow. Turns out the guy was bitten by a whitetail spider. He had a necrotizing reaction, and they had to cut a chunk out of his hand. To this day has been a good friend, and has always excelled at his work. And, of course, we still call him spider Matt. Not an employer, but my weirdest one was I live on an island now. Our neighborhood was flooded, but we live on the top of a hill, that peaked out above the water. Cold and get to work, because I literally cold and leave my island. One time I called my boss in a panic, and said he'd have to find someone to cover my shift, because the tip of a q-tip had come off in my ear and I cold and get it out. I was totally ready to go to the emergency room, I was in full panic mode, and every attempt to take it out pushed it deeper. Eventually my room had got it out with tweezers. I was only 5 minutes late for my shift. Yes I know you're not supposed to use them in your ears, but it feels so freaking good. I called out, because a SWAT team won't let me down my road the night, before I had to go to work. Apparently a neighbor holed up in their house with a gun, and was threatening to kill themselves and anyone who tried to come in his house a few houses down from mine. They won't escort me home, because my house was too close to the scene. Manager thought I full of shoot, and was yelling at me, until I told him to check the news. I could hear him telling someone to look at the local news and there was silence. He apologized immediately, and said he'd find coverage. 1995 or so, I had a message on the company answering machine from a girl, that was supposed to help an elderly lady get out of bed, and prepare for the day. Hi dying lun, this is Melanie, I can't make it misses. So and SOS because I hit a freaking cow. Not quite sure I believed her, until she sent a pic of her car. Totaled. Blood and all. Colon. Not an employer, but I had to call, in saying I would be late, because my cat decided, that the bag holding my work uniform was the perfect place, to puke up all his food, and have to wash my uniform. Store is super stingy, so I only have one set about 2 hours later, I'm on the phone talking with my manager, while getting ready and all of a sudden I smell shoot. I turn around, and I see the cat on my bed and has got the liquor shoots. All. 
over my uniform. I was willing to show proof via picture, but the manager took my word for it. We had a cat related incident at our work too. I was not a manager, but took the call and relayed the message to our manager. The guy called and said that his cat had gotten a fish hook stuck in its paw and that he would be late. My manager and I kinda though he was shooting us and just wanted to have a few more hours to sober up which wasn't out of the norm for him. He showed up 4 hours late absolutely covered in scratches. Turns out he opened his closet up to get his work uniform out and his cat ran in and started batting at his fishing pole, impaled its paw on the hook and went totally ballistic. He had to cut the line on the pole, to roll the cat into a crate and book it down to a vet to get the hook removed. Poor guy, we felt so bad I don't even think he got written up. No idea why he was keeping a fishing pole in his closet though. I'm not an employer, but here's an excuse that I later found out to be true from a co-worker a co-worked called in when I was getting off shift and he was going to replace me front desk at a hotel and he said he couldn't come in because he had to go donate plasma to get some money for food. Turns out he had not eaten in about two days, so he had food for his kids. He just got the job at the hotel and had not made it to first paycheck, yet after I found out later that day, when he did show up, I gave him $100 for groceries and a ride to the grocery store.